In this video, we're going to take a look at setting margins in Word 2016. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, uh, one way is to set margins for the entire document, and the other way is to set margins for a subset of your document. So uh, these are on the Layout tab, so let's go to the Layout tab, and we have a Margins option over here. Click on uh, Margins, and you get a bunch of choices here. Uh, this is the default one inch all the way around. They've got some other um, presets for you here that you can choose from. And if you don't like any of those, you can go to custom margins here. And you can set the top and the bottom and the left and the right to whatever you want to set them to. Okay, But these will apply to the entire document. Let's just cancel out of that. We're not going to change anything. Um, actually, let's go back here and... Um, Right now it says we've got 57 pages. Let's go click on margins and let's go to narrow and see what that does to our page count. And it goes from 57 down to 48. So by shrinking the margins down, we saved ourselves nine pieces of paper. Let's undo that and go back. Those are pretty narrow margins. Okay. The other way is uh, to set margins for part of your document. Okay. So if you're writing a paper and you've got kind of a long quote, if, if the quote is long, uh, the convention is to indent it a little bit. So let's pretend that we have a couple of paragraphs here that we want to indent a little bit. Um, there's a couple of choices for this. Uh, we've got some layout choices here. And if I bounce on this uh, five times, it goes to half an inch. If I bounce on this one, it goes in half an inch. So we've got 0.5 and 0.5 up here. And if you look down here, this, these three symbols here together make up the left margin indicator. And this symbol over here makes up the right margin indicator. And they each got pulled in by half an inch. Okay, I'm going to undo that. And I may have to do this uh, 10 times to undo. I do. Okay. Um, so that's what my document looks like with the default margins. By the way, you can always tell what the default margins are by looking at your ruler here. And the gray part uh, is the default margins for the entire document. And the white part is where your text goes. And you notice when I was increasing this stuff here, um, it did not increase the gray. It just increased these margin markers. Okay, let's go uh, and decrease that back to zero. Okay, the other way to do it is up on your ruler here. Now, if your ruler is not visible, if, as a matter of fact, if, if anything is ever not visible on your screen here, chances are that uh, it's on the View menu. And so click on the View tab up here, and we've got some choices here for the ruler. And if I turn that off, uh, no ruler. But I like to keep that on like 99% of the time. Uh, you can also put grid lines in your document. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that very often. I've never used that. Uh, you can also have the navigation pane visible, and we don't really need that right now either, so I'm going to turn that off. So uh, if your ruler is not showing, go to the View tab, click on Ruler, and you're good to go. Okay, so now we've got our ruler here, and we've got these uh, three margins or three markers on this side, and we've got one marker on this side. This one's the easiest one. I'm just going to click and drag on that, and if I pull it in an inch, it increases the size of the margin from uh, the one inch in the gray to a total of two inches now when you add in the white. So it's real easy to change the right margin for the text that you have selected. These are paragraph commands, so they apply to an entire paragraph. And I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller here so we can see how it compares with the other paragraphs. And if I move this back out, okay, now it's got basically the same margins as everything else. And then I've got three markers over here. And this first one is the first line indent marker. And if I click and drag on that, uh, you get a live preview here. It shows you what your first line will be indented to. Okay, normally it's probably going to be about half an inch on that. And so the first line of every paragraph that I have selected has been indented half an inch. Now, I've still got two other symbols over here. Okay, there's a little house and what looks like a little basement, a little rectangle underneath the house. And if you drag, I'm going to do the basement first. If you put the tip of your mouse on the basement and click and drag, uh, it keeps both of those symbols the same distance apart. So your first line indent and your other line indent uh, stay half an inch apart. So this, this moves everything. It moves both of them. And 
the other one is if you click on the house and drag now it looked like I was clicking on the house it looked to me anyway like I was clicking on the house and apparently this symbol is smaller than it used to be and it is really hard uh, you gotta click up way near the top of the house here I'm gonna try to click real near the top of the house and drag it and now it's moving independently of the first line indent marker so you can move it independently if you click on the top part of the house here apparently you know I'm, gonna, I'm sure I'm clicking on the house now if I click on the bottom part see it's moving both of these markers um, another way to make this work is just click on the basement here but hold the shift key down and that might be the easiest way because then you don't have to fiddle around with uh, precisely positioning the mouse so just remember to hold the shift key down while you move this bottom one back and forth and uh, it will move independently of the first line indent up here okay and there is one other option and that is using the keyboard to change indentation and there's two or four depending on how you count keyboard commands and I'm going to do control M and M stands for margin I think and so it increases the left margin and it goes by half inch increments and so you notice every time I do that this is moving over half an inch from where it was before I'm going to do a couple more control M control M and that increases my left margin now if you want to go back the other way it's control shift M so I'm going to do control shift M once twice three times four times five times and now I'm back where I started so control M and control shift M to change the left margin and now let's do a control T and what control T does is it basically controls the house and the basement on the bottom here okay all of the lines except the first one so now watch what happens when I do it a second time I get a hanging indent and if I do it again the hanging indent gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and this one works the same way if I do a control shift T it goes back in the other direction and uh, basically undoes the control T so we have options for the entire document on the layout tab here under margins and we have options for part of the document either by doing the margin indicators up here uh, dragging the markers that are on the ruler or by using control M and control T